All right, I'm going to request all to be on mute unless you're asking a question. So welcome to the mission number five of our CloudOps cohort. Uh, today, we're going to take up uh, a new topic where we are taking up, um, let's say, auto scaling and load balancing. So, so far, um, what we have done is we started with this use case that we want to build. And we are doing that on cloud with Linux networking, all the combination of uh, this. So that's why I'm calling it as a cloud ops cohort. It's more about uh, how do you, um, you know, um, kind of run operations on cloud. How do you do installation, configuration, optimization, network configurations, and stuff like that. And some advanced stuff that we looked at maybe last week with Natting, Nginx, SSH, etc. Now, what we have is uh, the application, you know, kind of deployed with front end and a catalog service. And the catalog may have a database backend uh, also. Uh, that is something we've looked at as a configuration, like a Postgres database backend that you can bring in with catalog as well, catalog service there. Now, what we want to do here is the configuration of the setup that we have right now, it's not uh, high available or scalable yet. That's what we want to bring in. Uh, I'm just trying to connect my iPad in the meanwhile so that I can explain these concepts with you. And... Uh, um, Okay. Just give me one second. I'm not able to focus on both the things. Let me bring up, connect my iPad and start explaining the concepts to you. Related to what we are trying to do here, where will we stand right now? And uh, what are we trying to achieve here? So we have this microservices application stack that is our front end, back end, and so on. And uh, um, there we have... Uh, Let's say this is where we stand. We last week set up uh, some NATing, some advanced configuration with NAT, Nginx, and stuff like that there, right? So we started building a secure infrastructure initially with VPC. We looked at how to design the network, create a virtual private cloud, create private public and private subnets. In fact, we have multiple private subnets, some reserved even for DB some for application, and then there is a public subnet there. Our front-end server is running here. Our catalog server is running here. And the database may be, let's imagine it being running here. So it's a very secure infrastructure that we have created. But as of now, these servers are prone to failures. These, these have single point of failure also. And uh, uh, they are not high available, uh, neither they are scalable, not high available there yet, right? So uh, that is what we want to bring in um, this week. And that's when we're going to talk about auto scaling. We're talking about, talking about images. We're going to talk about load balancing. We're also going to replace the Nginx. Nginx can also be the single point of failure. We looked at Nginx, and that's great to understand how reverse proxying works, how you can configure your own application, and so on uh, with, with it as well. But it's not really uh, a very high available kind of a setup there, right? So we're going to build that setup. And how do we start scaling up is where we're going to bring in uh, auto scaling features. And this time, I'm just going to focus on one application here. That is the catalog. And let's say the catalog service is what we want to scale. And we'll also make sure that this service is also being monitored and high available at least, even if you're running one instance of it. Uh, just to be frugal with the resources, we'll take one uh, application and one type of a server and scale that or create replicas of that basically. And that's what uh, we will end up doing here, right? Now, how do we go about doing that is where um, we'll bring in the auto scaling features. And to do that, we have five step process here. That is what I'm gonna explain to you. Also, we'll uh, replace Nginx, which is running here which is running as a reverse proxy. It's part of the same server here, the Nginx. We'll replace the Nginx with the actual load balancer called as ALB, uh, managed service. Through that managed service, we'll route to these servers. We'll route to the front end also. Based on the request, we will get different listeners and we will route according to uh, the request that, that is coming in uh, to our, you know, um, to our load balancer, basically. 
So how do we go about doing this scaling itself? Is we'll take, let's say we want to deploy this with high availability, scalability, et cetera. That's very important, right? When you have an application and when you want to make sure that uh, it can uh, support the incoming requests, uh, however many, you know, let's say you have 10,000 requests right now and you start scaling, you get more customers and suddenly you need to scale to um, a 1 million or maybe 10 million from there. Uh, request count per second and so on. So how do we go about doing that is where you need to have an ability to start scaling out your application infrastructure, et cetera. I'll give you one good example of that. So this is an infrastructure that I built for a platform which serves to, it's like a news network and uh, they cater to uh, mainly the Spanish speaking countries in Europe. And uh, um, mainly, um, you know, let's say sports news, right? So typically their traffic charts, and there are like 30 odd sites on that platform. Um, and the typical traffic looks like this traffic pattern, right? During the day, the traffic peaks, during the night, it goes down. Now there could be multiple such, you know, peaks here during the day, like, 9 to 9 to 11 in the morning 9 to 11 in the uh, uh 9 to 11 in the night and then around uh, maybe five o'clock right so when people have more time they'll go and start uh, reading the news and also start accessing the social media or start using e-commerce platform so there is a pattern typically and then during the match if there is a major game going on then you see a sudden spike now this looks like a small thing then uh, the regular traffic because during the event it will scale like this and then it will go back to its own uh, normal um, you know traffic pattern so how do you handle this kind of a scale from the infrastructure side why do we need to handle it is imagine you are a sports news platform um, something like you know crickinfo.com right in india cricket is very famous so if you go to crickinfo.com during the match time and you see the site being down right that affects the credibility of Crick Info or some platform like that. I'm just giving you an example there. So you have to ensure that your platform is up and it is catering to the customers as they grow. So your platform also should scale. And as your customers, the requests shrink, your platform should also shrink. How do you make it happen is where you can bring in auto scaling. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're talking about horizontal scaling. There are two main ways of scaling. One is a vertical scaling where you can start with a small server and then you will say, oh, I'll replace it with medium server. And then you'll go with large, maybe an extra large. And you keep on growing that same server um, when you need to cater to more requests. There are multiple issues here, right? So one is it can... Now, what are the problems with vertical scaling like this? Are there any issues that you see here if you start scaling like this? Anyone? Okay. The problem with vertical scaling, there are plenty. One is a single point of failure because you just have one server. It might be an extra large server or maybe a 4x large server, but you have, uh, uh, you know, some limit uh there is a single point of failure you'll also hit a ceiling sometimes so you're taking like 10 million requests uh it may not be possible with the any kind of a server which is available at uh, at the given point of time even if you have what about the bandwidth because you may create multiple interfaces so you'll have some limits in terms of bandwidth in terms of capacity and that's when vertical scaling is not such a great idea horizontal scaling is so how do you scale horizontally is you start launching more servers. So you can basically go and say, hey, I have five instances right now. When I need, I can go from five to 50 to, you know, to 500 to 5,000. And, uh, you know, basically you can scale to like unlimited capacity uh, this way. And then you are also doubling your bandwidth. You're doubling the network interfaces. You're dub you know, you are also adding high availability with horizontal scaling. There are plenty of advantages of using uh, this kind of a scaling mechanism, the horizontal scaling. And that's what we should be ideally doing. And the prerequisite for this is your application has to be stateless, meaning you shouldn't be storing anything in one specific instance that you cannot recreate. 
if you are storing data, store it somewhere else on a network drive or somewhere else. And that's the right way of uh, doing this basically, the horizontal scaling. So how do we achieve the horizontal scaling is where it's a five step process really, if you look at the scaling scaling thing. So if I want to set up auto scaling, load balancing, because when you start distributing the traffic across these, you also need to think about load balancing, right? There you have a couple of concepts there. So how do we go about achieving high availability, scalability for our application, fault tolerance and so on? Is And then when you do this, you also want to make sure that your in infrastructure is scaling across availability zones and that kind of a configuration as well, right? So that is what I'm gonna demonstrate here. How to achieve this is five-step process where you start with an existing instance, which is fully configured Let's say for the catalog instance, we have an EC2 instance configured. And the first step is to create an image out of that. It's called as AMI in AWS. Once you have created an image, you create a launch template. What is a launch template? You mainly define four things. What are the four things? One is which image to use. Because when you launch an instance, this is basically a template to launch an instance. It will look like launching an instance, but it's not. It is just defining a, defining four things. One is the AMI that you want to use, right? Uh, second is the type of an instance. Typically with EC2, you have uh, this T2 micro, X3, T4, X large. So whatever the type of the instance is. So AMI, the type of an instance. Uh, number three is the security key pair. Number four is the security group. Right, so those are the four configurations you must provide when you are trying to set up the auto scaling. Okay, and my iPad is getting disconnected a lot, so I have to keep on reconnecting. Sorry about that. But uh, uh, the image, the server type, uh, how to connect to it, the key pair, and the security group, whether you are allowed to connect to it or not. So those are the configuration that you define in the launch template. And then you, this is the step number two. Step number three is where you define something called as a target group, which is then associated with a load balancer. This is the load balancer that you're gonna hit, your users are gonna hit, and that load balancer will be connected to the target group. Target group is a set of instances that you run. Now, this is where it gets interesting because earlier, all of this was part of load balancing. Now you have target groups which are different, load balancer which is different. Target groups are responsible for health checks, keeping the instances available, healthy, and so on. And then you connect it with the load balancer. Load balancer will send traffic to it. And this way you can create target group for different applications. So you can say, this is a target group for catalog application. This is a target group for front-end application. And based on the request which is coming in, if it says like, oh, front end, which is xyz.com, send it to send it to the front end. If it is xyz.com slash maybe catalog, I'm just giving an example, you will say send it to this one. That is how you can use one load balancer. It's like instead of that Nginx as a reverse proxy, that's exactly what we're doing here. Instead of that Nginx thing, we are basically sending it to different target groups from one single entry point that is a load balancer. And you can have different listeners on different ports or same port, but different requests with different headers. And you can control all of that, you know, when you set up the load balancer. And then you define the auto scaling. Auto scaling is like a bot. I generally draw this dancing robot, right? Yeah. Yeah, most of my robots are dancing. If I design a robot, I'll probably just build a dancing robot there. So this is my auto scaling group. What does this bot do? This is responsible for scaling. This is where you define uh, how to launch an instance. That is this launch template using that. And then you feed in like, oh, how many instances to run? So that is a configuration like minimum, maximum, desired so you define that and based on that it will decide how many instances you run here 
you also decide uh, uh, based on what metric you scale, right? So you, when you scale, you have to decide on what based on what metric you are scaling it and all that, right? And based on that, it will decide, you define the scaling policies. So you define the policies which say these are the set of rules saying that if this is that greater than that, uh, do this. So that's an action. So scaling policies, etc. So auto scaling group is where it all comes together. But we'll have to go step by step with creating an image. So the idea is to make sure our application is capable of scaling. Yeah. As the load goes up, the application scales also. And we'll just take one application that is this catalog, the backend service and uh, do the data for it. There will be something we'll do for front end also, but it's mainly the catalog that we will set up the auto scaling for, okay? So how does this work? Uh, that's what I will demonstrate to you step by step. Again, um, I may not have the exact set of instructions for you for this. So if you are gonna try it later, you can watch this kind of a uh, video recording and try it accordingly. I'll share a sample lab, but it's gonna be for a different uh, application. So you'll have to make some changes accordingly. So what are we doing here? The backend service is what I want to scale. So I'll take a image out of this. How? I'll uh, go to the actions, image, and I'll say create an image. For what? For the backend or a catalog. And it will reboot an instance and all of that, and I'm fine with that. Uh, so creating the image is, is as simple as that. What happens now is it starts creating an AMI. AMI is the image. It's called as Amazon machine image. And that is the image that you want to use to decide how uh, you're going to scale your application. By what, uh, uh, you know, um, what is the... Con, you know, what is the instance? How are we going to create an instance? So you need an image for that. And that's what we're defining here. Right? So the first thing is an image and it starts creating an image. You see, this is in pending state. Uh, it will take some time. It's going to take a few minutes. In the meanwhile, I can start creating the step number two, which is my launch template. So the image is what I'm trying to create right now. The next thing is, creating a launch template. Launch template is where I'll define these four things, four configurations. And launch template, if you look at it, uh, it's going to look like I'm creating an instance, but it will not create one. It will just have the template ready for me. So this is how I create a launch template, where I'll say this is a launch template for what? For catalog. Yeah. So catalog launch template. And uh, the uh, this is the catalog app. So what do I define here? Mainly four things. One is the AMI. So I'll pick my AMI and select the catalog image, which is being created right now, right? So the image, you can select it immediately. Instance type is the free tier eligible, T2 micro, key pair, whatever the security key pair you have created. This is the one I've been using since beginning and network setting, it's not mandatory, right? You can provide it, but it's not mandatory. I'm just gonna select uh, one of the private subnet because my catalog application, and remember, remains in the private subnet only, right? So security group wise, it will use the existing security group for the application that is catalog, which has all the rules which it requires uh, available. So mainly four things, right? The after uh, apart from the name and description, the image, instance type, key pair, and the security group. This is optional, the subnet and VPC and all that. But those four things are important. And with that, I'm creating a launch template here. Once I have the launch template created like this, the good thing about launch template is you can also launch an instance outside of Autoscaler as well. If you want to create a launch template, this becomes like a pre-baked configuration. And I can just say create launch, uh, uh, say launch instance with this. So action launch instance from template. 
use the launch template, which has everything filled in. That is the idea about launch template. Everything is filled in. That is the launch template, right? And then the next step is defining a target group. Now, this is where it gets interesting because target group is part of load balancer configuration. And then you can create multiplexing here with target group, just like a reverse proxy. What that means is, let's suppose you have a load balancer. And then you can route traffic to different applications. You have some servers running catalog, some servers running front end, right? And then based on the request which is coming in, like xyz.com, which can go to the front end. And let's say xyz.com slash catalog or xyz.com colon 5000. So you can do it different ways. Now that request will go to catalog versus this request will go to the front end based on how you have configured it. And that's why our target groups are useful for this purposes. So you have load balancer, like one load balancer, multiple target groups, and it can route traffic based on your requests. How does it work? We will look at it. So I'll create two target groups, one for each application. Uh, and we'll also add existing instances to it. So I have a target group named catalog, uh, catalog target group, okay? And then uh, it is important to add a listener where your application is actually running. So catalog application, you, you have seen that it runs on port number 5,000. I've sh uh, shown you already. This is a Python Plask application runs on port number 5,000. And uh, that is what I'm gonna add as a listener with IPv4. VPC has to be the same VPC everything is in and uh, health checks. Then you select your existing catalog instance. So this is for the catalog. So that is the backend server on 5,000 port, which is what I'm gonna add to this target group. Okay, see target group by itself doesn't do anything. It needs a load balancer on top, but you need a target group where to actually add the instances. And when you have more than one instance also, it will automatically get added to this group and the load balancing will happen based on that. So I'm creating two target groups here. One for the front end. Front end runs on port number 3000, right? And uh, that is what I'm adding here. Same uh, uh, VPC. I'll take my front end, add it here to this target group. So when it comes to target group, there could be multiples actually. Yeah, so you see two target groups, front end and catalog, representing two of my different application services. So two target groups, one for the front end, one for the catalog. And then now I'll add the load balancer, which will actually route the traffic based on something, some logic. The front end and the catalog is there. Again, catalog is a part of a, uh, catalog is part of a private network, remember. But you can have a load balancer, which is in a public network, okay? You can have the load balancer that is in public network, like, here, that still has access to your instances in the private network. So it is possible to route to the catalog service, which can reside in a private network also. This is public subnets. This is a private subnet, but the load balancer is part of the same VPC. It has access to these also. We'll use that, we'll use of that. So that's why I've created two target groups and one load balancer 
one load balancer is enough. Typically, an application load balancer. Network load balancer is like you will have to create multiple for multiple services and all that. Whereas application load balancer, just one instance is enough. And uh, I will add a load balancer for this entire application called as craft tester. A load balancer is internet facing. Yeah, that's why I've chosen the VPC and to availability zones where the load balancer has a presence, which should be a public subnet in each of this. Load balancer has its own security group. If it is not there, you can create one. For load balancer, you just need uh, I'm going to create one. Call it as uh, load balancer. Yeah, we want to accept traffic on port 80, maybe on something like port 5000 also. I'll tell you why uh, when we configure it. This is for the catalog service if needed. This is for the front end application. Port 80 will go to the front end obviously because that's what we want to redirect our users to. And you can have a different port or same port, but different header or a host name or a path and configure it that way as well. So I'm creating a security group, which is what I'm going to attach to this same load balancer. So load balancer is a security group here. And uh, listener is port 80, which is what I'm going to redirect to the catalog uh, uh, front end service. See, you can have load balancer listening on a different port than your application is. Okay, so the way I've configured this is my load balancer, the front end listener, whatever my request coming into on port 80 is what I can redirect to the rule that I've added to the front end's port 3000. And that's fine. You can have 80 port pointing here. 80 port with a different header pointing here or a different port pointing to this service also. So this front end port 80 is what uh, will, I mean, the load balancer port 80 is going to the front end as of now. Okay, and then I will create the load balancer. And here, what is important to see is uh, whether your resource map shows the proper rules or not. So you see listener, port 80 on load balancer is being forwarded to the target group. Through that target group, we are hitting a instance which is running the front end application on port 3000. On the load balancer side, it is listening on port 80. What this means is if I hit my load balancer's port 80 at this time, it should take me to my front end application uh, on port number 3000, which is my UI. And uh, that should happen if not already, uh, maybe in a few seconds. Because the health check may get triggered. Okay, we'll have to help, wait for the health check to go through as well, because you'll see the load balancer is there. But if I look at the target group and front end, Nobody was using that target group, so it was still unused so far. And now it will start, you know, doing the health checks and stuff like that. So port 3000 here on the front end, target registration is in progress, it says, right? So initial health check is in progress. And uh, since it is part of that initial health check, we'll have to wait to, for it to become healthy. Once it is healthy, we should see that request here. Same, so while that is happening, I can also show you what's going on with the uh, uh, all right, let's wait for this and then we'll add another rule. 
So we see the load balancer. Okay, so this is still in the initial. Uh, it takes a minute. In fact, more than a minute for the head check to pass. So it may take that much time. And what we also want to do is route the traffic. So right now, this doesn't show anything. Neither does if I try something like catalog as a route. That doesn't show anything either. Uh, if I try port 5000, uh, there is nothing either, right? Let's see the load balancer is up or not. Yes, it is. So now it is routing traffic to my front end servers. So when I hit the 80 port, and that's what you can uh, translate or point your domain name to, if it hits 80 port, it is going to the front end, which is perfect. Now what we can do is do either of these things. We'll try whichever works, okay? Uh, so when you look at the load balancer, you can point it to multiple target groups. So there are already target groups available, front end and uh, catalog, both. Uh, both have instances, and I can point my load balancer by adding a rule right here. I can add a rule which says, if the request has slash catalog, so I'll add a conditional, and that can be a header or a path, right? A path can be like this, slash catalog, slash something, or maybe there is another API, which is slash API products. Anything which starts with API products or catalog, I want to send it to my catalog target group, right? So you can add a listener like this. So same port and host, or 80, if you don't provide any path like this, catalog or API products, it is going to take this route, the default, right? Because this is no, not a match here. You have to def define the priority as well for this. And if it, it will take the first priority. If it does not match this, it will go to the default. Default is a front end, which is already in play, which is already working. The front end is working already. Uh, this is not loading catalog because front end server is not able to connect to the catalog yet. Now this rule has been added. And if I go back to the load balancer, look at the route map for it or a resource map for it. I see that the same host and port based on the path, it will route me to the front end or the catalog service. If catalog service port 5,000, if front end service port 3,000, this is how you can do the load balancing and kind of routing in a way that you have something here. This kind of a routing. Where based on a host name or a path, based on a host name or a path, we are doing a match by path catalog or API products. Based on that, it will take us. So if the path has a match, it will take us to catalog service. If it does not, then there is a default service, which is our front end. And that's how this reverse proxying ha is happening. So you don't need per se Nginx because this is high available. This is scalable, the ALB that is, and it works pretty well uh, for our service discovery as well, because then we can just point to the load balancer, port something or by path something, and it will automatically route us to that service, even between front-end and back-end communication we are looking at. Well, listener rules are there. Let me look at the target group. If I see the, this is host uh, working or not. Uh, this seems healthy now. And I'm gonna try with the path, okay? I'm not sure whether this works or not. I've, I'm still testing this, okay? The catalog does not seem to work directly like this because I think it is probably going to the backend, but the backend is not able to process a path like this. And that's where it has a problem, looks like. Take this host name, try with your HTTP. So this product service, the product catalog, 
has a couple of APIs that it exposes. There are two ways of going about this. If this doesn't work, we'll use a different one. Okay. All right, so this seems to be not working exactly as expected. So what I can do is route it to a particular path. So mm -hmm. let's say this HTTP port is not working. So I can take another listener, create another listener here on port number 5,000 and point that or make that point to my catalog service also. So there are multiple approaches or ways of achieving the same result here that we want. Okay, so what is the other way to create a, another listener? So I can use the same load balancer essentially, but a different listener. Remember this is in private network, the uh, catalog service. And that's fine uh, because we can add one more listener on a different port. Let's say 5,000 port on the load balancer goes to the 5,000 port on catalog. Catalog has already been configured with 5,000. So that's all I may need. And I can look at the resource map to understand the rules. This thing is very useful resource map. So you can see now there are two listeners, same load balancer, but if a request comes on 5,000, it is going to the catalog. It is also going via this route, which is currently not working. We can fix it possibly, but I'll try to use the port number instead, which is port number uh, colon 5,000. Let me check the API uh, products API. Let's just go to the catalog. This will take me to the catalog. with HTTP because there is no HTTPS yet. Yeah, so this is fine. This is taking me to a catalog where I can list all the products, which is the API products I was trying to hit. And uh, this shows me the list of products, right? This is via the API call. And this is like a JSON output I get from that API server when I list the products using this. This is a get request to the API service. API products is the path there. Now this is working. I can configure my application to also point to this load balancer. Meaning the front end can talk to the back end using this URL in itself so that no matter what and how many instances are there for the back end, it's fine, right? So it can always discover it. So we're trying to use some service discovery from front end to back end can also go through this or oh, this is one constant IP or host name colon 5000 and it will always take me to the backend service. So let me connect to that front end server and configure that. Uh, the front end server's IP address is this. This has a configuration here. Uh, for the front end, where I see config.json. And then instead of this catalog URL, this is where I will have to check my uh, connection. All right, so this is where I'm going to say my load balancer URL. And that's what is going to my catalog service. So I can discover through catalog uh, this load balancer itself, actually. Right? 
this is a good idea because then uh, this host name doesn't change. Through this, you can have a constant endpoint and it can point to however many or how you know whatever uh, instances you have available at any given point in time. I'll restart the service for front end and you will see this uh, loading. Now the application should be able to load the catalog. It is able to connect to that. And we are kind of connecting via the load balancer. So far so good, right? So this is working fine. We are not only able to access the uh, catalog service, which is behind in a private network, by the way, this is in private network. If you don't want to expose it, that's also fine, right? To the outside world, you can restrict it by just locking it down. See, we can lock it down only for this uh, particular thing, right? 5000 port, only for internal communication. So if you want to don't expose it right outside, you can still lock it down and say, edit these rules and this 5000 port only available for my internal communication, which is my VPC IP. Now you need to follow, if you haven't followed the previous session, you may not be able to connect the links. So you may want to go and check the previous recordings to understand what we are talking about, why this side of block and why this particular IP and so on, right? Because this is like a project that we built which builds on top of another, uh, the previous sessions actually. So now what will happen is, I will not be able to connect to the backend service like this. Yeah, that will not work. It's, it's still loading, it will not work. But the application should be able to connect using the same endpoint and all that. This should still function. So for the application, this visibly there should be visibility into the backend service, right? So I'm just gonna check, make sure this is correct. Ten zero 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 slash sixteen. Yes, it seems correct. So the application should be able to connect to the backend. That is the idea. So this is not working currently. This is still not working either, yeah, but we can make it work. We can have some sort of a way we can find out where we can allow this communication either via uh, this kind of a rule or via uh, maybe a security group of uh, the front end and back end and all of that. So let's say, uh, front end can communicate with uh, this. So we'll have to add a new rule actually for this to work. Okay, just connecting or making it available right now again for the front end and back end, but you can restrict it by security groups uh, or side of blocks. Either of that should work. In fact, side of blocks should work. Uh, why it doesn't? That probably needs a little bit of a debugging. Now, this has been set up, so I'm still loading this. Hopefully nothing here is screwed up. 5080 is fine, if 5000 is fine, this is an inbound rule. Outbound is fine. We'll just wait for this to load, that's fine. Uh, and then what I want to do next is set up for auto scaling. This is working, this should work also. Uh, what I want to do next is set up auto scaling. Auto scaling is where what we will achieve is this is where we'll decide uh, what happens with the number of instances, how many instances are run, and they should be high available also. This is going to give us high availability, scalability as well. Scale as in how many, we'll define that using some three numbers. Uh, availability, like if something goes down, uh, it should bring it back up again. And then also scalability, as in uh, ability to scale based on the metric like traffic or uh, CP utilization or something on that line, right? And that will give us an, uh, the real ability to horizontally scale this catalog service, 
right now that's what we are focusing on but you can do this and implement it for any number of instances that's where you configure the auto scaling yeah this is working i think there was just some network issue while loading that but uh, it's all working fine and it should be so how do i configure the auto scaling this is where everything comes together this is a seven step process okay auto scaling is a seven step process where you start by configuring this is where you bring in everything together like you will decide uh, which launch template to use to scale it so this is the auto scaler for uh, only for the catalog so catalog uh, auto scaling group is the configuration so first step is to define the launch template second step is where you define the network VPC and the subnet because this will get launched in a private subnet only. We are talking about the catalog service which runs in a private subnet, right? So whichever private subnets you have with the availability zones, you choose them here. Only those that form the scope for the scaling. So when the instances are launched, you want the instances to launch only in the private subnets, only here, right? only here. We don't want to run it in private public subnet, neither the DB subnet. It should run only in these two subnets. Two subnets, why? Because we are leveraging availability zones or different data centers for high availability. Now, we start running, uh, going to the next one. So this is where we say attached to the existing load balancer. Through what? Through This is for a catalog service, so through catalog. So this is the one, the autoscaler is the one which is gonna maintain how many instances are added to the target group. Target group is what load balancer is pointing to. So when you say we're connecting to the load balancer, we are connecting to a target group only through the autoscaling group and it will work automatically. Then comes the capacity. This is where we define minimum, let's say one, maximum, which is five and start with two. This is the scale that you want. So I'm saying that minimum of one is what I want, max is five, right? Now we're just defining some checks here, right? So we don't want too many instances here and we are running a lab environment um, where we want to restrict the number of instances which are created. But in real life, it could be a minimum of four, maximum of 40 or maximum of 400, minimum of 10. So it depends on your scale and your requirements and so on. So that is up to you to decide how many instances you want, what is the range. It will not fall below minimum, it will not go above maximum, right? So that's the idea. When you start, it will launch somewhere in between, between min and max, and that is the desired number it starts with. Desired is the current. That keeps on changing. This, how scaling happens is, let's say you launch with 10 instances or 15 instances, min is 10, maximum is 50. You launch with 14 instances, let's say. And then it starts looking at what is the current requirement? Do I need to scale out, like add more or reduce some, right? So that is decided later. And accordingly, desired count changes. Desired is a dynamic thing. It keeps on changing based on the current requirement based on the scaling policies. So this is where we add a scaling policy. A good scaling policy is a number of request count per target, right? Like average request count. And that is a good indicator of how many uh, instances you need for a particular workload. For example, if each of this instance can cater to 10,000 requests per seconds, let's imagine that, if you are getting 50,000 requests, you know exactly how many instances you need. You need five, right? So it you can benchmark it and approximately create a number and say that, oh, based on this number, I want to decide when to scale. So a good idea is to use a policy such as this. We're going to be going to use uh, application load balance, request count per target, basically. Request count per instance, this is. So target group is catalog target. That's where our catalog servers are. And we say how many requests we can afford to run. For instance, let's say 500, a decent number right now to start with. We can tweak it later. So initially it will start two, and then it will scale down, scale up based on how many are required at that time. 
and then uh, how to launch the instance launch it before terminating after terminating so you can decide that so we not defining any policy we are not adding any these are email notifications we don't want any uh, tags you can add some if you want like i add a name tag here catalog servers added by the auto scaler that's what this would mean and uh, that's it so this is where i check everything like oh what is my launch template which network it will launch in this is why we don't have to provide it in the launch template rest of the configurations like instance type image everything comes from the launch template and then you have the load balancer then you have everything else and we now create a auto scaling group once i have the auto scaling group with like two instances essentially what this does it starts launching two instances that's our initial count right you see that is what is happening if i go back to instances i'll see actually three one which is my existing backend server yeah and then two more being launched part of auto scaler at this time i can also delete my previous instance i don't need it because I have the auto scaler, which is taking care of my instances, right? So the scale, it launches two. All right, so it launches two instances. And we'll just wait for it to be uh, in a running state. So I'll see auto scaling group has launched uh, two instances right now. Okay. That's the initial count. And as a result of that, I should also see it in the target group. My target group has uh, these two instances, which are healthy. The third one, which is deleted, is will be gone in a few seconds, but I start with two instances. Okay, so when it's trying to connect, now again, my previous instance is gone, but my endpoint doesn't have to change, my, as in this configuration doesn't need to change at all, because it may be pointing to different IP addresses, and that's fine. We are running behind a load balancer. The load balancer ID doesn't change, the host name doesn't change. So we have actually a good way of defining service discovery, connecting one service to another without bothering about the actual IP address of the instances. So good way of defining the service discovery already. And the application should be able to connect to one of these backends catalog services. And through that, we are able to get this these details actually. So I want to look at the catalog service, which is what I'm connecting to. Uh, I should be able to go to 5,000 port, just 5,000 port on the load balancer, which should take me to uh, some catalog service, provided my load balancer allows or has that configuration through security group. My load balance security group. I'm just checking, confirming that everything is good with this. Should be actually. Uh, the 5000 port is open to public. That is what uh, I should be able to connect with through this URL. Uh, I am able to do that. And you can see that this is now going to IP address 88. Uh, let me refresh this and it's going to. 10. This is load balancer. The same endpoint pointing to different IPs because I have two instances right now. And uh, that's what you will see here. The instance, one instance has the address of dot 10. 
the other one dot eighty-eight, meaning there is a load balancing happening already, right? So we now not only have the service discovery, but also the load balancing already working in action. And now I'll just show you the scalability, how this can scale. To scale it, we'll have to send it. Uh, we have to basically trigger the policy. What is the policy? You see the policy that we have defined says if the request count, like number of requests are greater than 500, you start scaling, right? So that is what it is looking at. So what are, what, are, what are we looking at? So we are looking at application load balancer request count per target. How do you find out? We can look at the load balancer and target groups to find that monitoring data. So you can actually check this CloudWatch metric also to find out what is gonna trigger the alarm. It would have created an alarm already. So you can look at the monitoring data from, let's say, load balancer. Like how many requests are going in? What is the latency or a response time? Uh, number of requests per um, instance would be possibly a target group catalog monitoring, because this is where we get request count uh, per instance, per target that is, right? So request count per target, this is where we're getting. So approximately like, you know, six, five, six requests per minute or so it's coming in here. Um, not a lot. And you can see it in CloudWatch also, where there will be an alarm defined to track this. Yeah. and. Uh, the lowest end is what has been triggered right now. So it will start scaling down. Actually, if we don't do anything, it will start scaling down automatically because this is the request count per target. 500 is the target, but right now we're getting like one, two requests, right? So it is actually triggering the scale down. So both are set up. When you define scale up policy, there is a scale down policy also, which has been set at a 10% uh, interval. So 450, connection, if it is less than that for 15 minutes, it will trigger scale down. Since this shows up on an alarm state, what that means is it should have actually started scaling down. So desired count was two, right? But when there is no need for even two instances, the minimum is one, right? It will scale down to one. That's what it is doing right now. So if you look at this now, the desired capacity is changed to one, not two. And as a result of that, you're going to see some activity where it should have started triggering a termination, it's still draining the connection, right? It's just doing gracefully, it's trying to drain the connection, then it will terminate the instance. So scale down is already active. Okay. How do we scale up? We need to provide some load on this, right? This is kind of, uh, marked for termination. One of this is marked for termination already, right? How do we scale out from here, scale up from here is we have to start generating some requests, like some real requests. And for that, I'll run a load test here against this particular endpoint, which is this port 5000, right? This endpoint is where if I'm getting requests like more than 500 requests per second, uh, it would start scaling eventually. This or maybe this API, products API, right? We can make a call to this. We can make a call to this one uh, directly also, right? And load this page and uh, that would count as a request per uh, second as well. So how would we do that is I'll run a load test using an application called as Siege. Okay, I'm gonna pick my lab guide for this.
So how do I run a load test is something like this. Now this is, uh, I will share this with you, but uh, this is slightly different uh, uh, application also when I show you the auto scaling lab. So you'll have to modify it as per our requirement here. But the configuration that we have is slightly different. So you can refer to this video and the recording for this uh, to understand it. And then we are talking about uh, some sort of a load test. Now this only has the configuration for it, the load balancer only, not the load test. I run a load test using containers actually, or an application called as Siege. And uh, I'll be doing that uh, with one of the containers that I already have. Something like this may work as well. So what I'll do is I'll just connect to one of my servers. Uh, and, and launch a load test from there. You can directly install an application called as Siege and run a command like this as well if you want. Let me do that. Siege is one of the utilities which can help you generate a load test like Apache Benchmark is another, AB. Uh, Siege is another. Siege starts, will start bombarding this endpoint with a, uh, with thousands and thousands of connections. That's what I'm aimed to do. Uh, five concurrent connection is quite a lot. I'll say two or three. In the benchmarking mode is a load test. I want to run it for five minutes. Against this is the important part. This is your endpoint. So what are you generating the load against? That you have to define here at the end. And that is your endpoint like this. Yeah. And now what you're going to see is you'll have to wait for a couple of minutes because at least it takes one minute for the uh, scaling activity to monitoring to pick it up and uh, start scaling. And based on the policy, for example, this policy here says uh, uh, start scaling out when the load balancer count breaches 500, right? Whenever it breaches 500. I think even once if it breaches 500, it should trigger this. So we're looking at this particular metric within three minutes, it will, take about three minutes to even trigger the scaling activity, right? That is our current policy. So we'll have to wait for about three minutes for the load uh, balancer to trigger it after it has crossed this thrice actually. With an um, you know, interval of one minute, you'll get one data point. So only after three minutes, it's gonna launch the load test and we'll have to wait till that uh, for the bench, you know, this to kind of trigger it. It has started running the load test against that particular endpoint 5000. So what you should see definitely uh, if this load test is going through perfectly fine, some spike in the number of requests after a minute or so, you can expect to see a spike in the number of requests here. To what from, uh, we're talking about this particular endpoint here. Let me just ensure that I have access to that endpoint. Yeah. It looks like there is some issue connecting to this particular endpoint.
from my uh, server. This is running on a cloud called as DigitalOcean. And from there, it's trying to connect to this API endpoint actually. That's where it seems to be not exactly connecting. Uh, let me try some variations of it. Yeah, this is fine. This seems fine. So it is going via port 80. That is working. Port 80 is working. So it's actually going via uh, port 80 API products. This is loading for uh, from my server actually. So I can test that endpoint and I'll have to run uh, this test for a little longer because the scaling activity itself will trigger after three minutes. Yeah, so whatever I'm doing here, it is just doing this multiplied by thousand times, every second possibly, right? So trying to send those many requests now. And depending on how this behaves. So here you see uh, it had a problem connecting to the API service. This also seems to have a some issue connecting to it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. So um, I've not tested it with this particular application. So we'll have to see what is going on with this. Ideally, this should start triggering some event and uh, spike in the number of requests here yeah if it does not show up here that means there is something wrong in uh, receiving the number of requests So there is, seems to be some issue, definitely connecting to that endpoint, either uh, related to security group or possibly with the instance itself, uh, not responding uh, properly. And that is what seems to be happening here. Since I'm not able to run the load test, I will actually uh, see if this works or sometimes it works actually, sometimes it doesn't. So there seems to be some issue with the application in that case. Just try to run it one more time, maybe with uh, less number of connections. So you see, it generally shows or creates thousands of connections, which is not happening. That means there is a problem. We'll just try one more time. And then if not, I'll figure it manually, the scaling activity. The number of requests coming in should reflect here actually somewhere. 
for my target group. And based on that, we are defining the scaling. So uh, that's where it seems to be some issue here. And uh, I'm trying to run one more time the uh, siege. It could just be the application, the one which is running with Python Flask uh, as a catalog service. It could be something to do, uh, do with that also. Yeah, maybe that's not responding as expected, but it's not able to take these men, this much of these many connections either. So one of that. Yeah, so I'm not stress tested it really. So uh, we'll just wait and see if it's, it shows up here. If it does not in a minute, uh, let's see if we can trigger it from here. So certain policies you can trigger saying that, uh, oh, I'm trying to simulate this particular uh, activity or an event and go ahead and trigger that for me, right? So there is an execute for this one. So there are certain policies which you can execute. But uh, uh, if this would work, what does happen is it will trigger um, an activity and it starts scaling by defining the number of instances here. The number of instances in uh, the auto scaling group, the desired count drives that. Right now it has scaled down, that you definitely see. There is something else that I can definitely show you is uh, uh, even if you have one instance, there is a high availability uh, because it is constantly looking for that instance to be up. So whenever the instance goes down, for example, uh, anytime that happens like this uh, catalog, if it goes down, there's only one running right now. Let me terminate it and show you. Yeah, and we'll just wait for to see what happens here. It's still timing out. So I think there is a problem. Yes. So in total, it sent like six connections. So there is definitely something going wrong here. Uh, and I'm not going to do this continue with it right now. So I'll show you this part though. So I'm terminating it. So since autoscaler is there, it is always trying to make sure that uh, this desired number of instances are available. And I just deleted one. It will detect that and it will create a new one as a result of it. Uh, you will see that happen, right? So you know, in a few minutes time, you are gonna see that happen, exactly that happen because this instance is being terminated right now. Yeah, so you see the instance is shutting down, it's being terminated. It will come up again. It will come up. See a new instance is uh, now running. Uh, we'll see, come here and see. So this order scaling group is supposed to maintain one instance and it has launched one. You can, uh, sorry, should look at the time. Yeah, uh, it started launching a new instance. That's what it said as a result of what unhealthy instance needing to be replaced, right? So it detected that is some issue. Uh, so there seems to be one instance down and it mitigates that by creating and launching a new one. That's when you saw uh, a new instance being launched in a running state right now. Right? This is what it terminated. This is what came up. And then if you have the scaling policies, it uh, based on the metric and based on, unfortunately, the load test is not working fine. Uh, so that's why I have to give up on this one. But if it had been working or if you send requests via this, but this I can send like 20 requests for uh, 30 requests, 20 requests per minute or so. And that's not like too much. It's not enough to cross this threshold either. Uh, but the point here is I'm trying to do is see if at least I'm able to generate those many requests and if it is going through or not. Because this API server may have an issue or may be acting up is what I'm thinking right now. Uh, and uh, that's probably why 
uh, it's not working as expected, right? So that's uh, something that might be happening. But uh, you see, uh, as and when the thresholds are be breached, thresholds like these, this is the monitoring data, uh, and you can scale based on any metric which is available in CloudWatch. You can create a custom alarms, custom metrics. You can use that as well. And based on any metrics being breached, it would trigger a new uh, instance or it will delete some instances. Deleting, you've already seen when it scales down here, it did as part of this alarm, uh, meaning then, you know, the number of requests were pretty low. So it did scale down already. And scale up will also happen based on uh, what is the current situation, whether it is about this red line or not. And based on that, you can kind of scale out, scale in as well, right? Typically, I use a PHP application with uh, um, th the one I typically use is this DevOps demo for my cloud workshops. And for that, it works fine. With even T2 Micro, with this application, it works fantastic, no problems with the load test and all that. Uh, with this one, uh, seems to have some issue. So that's something I'll keep on uh, trying out later. But uh, that's what I wanted to show you as part of auto scaling. So if you want to set up auto scaling to summarize, you need five step process. And you start by creating an image. Then you create a launch template. Then you create a target group. Could have multiple target groups and load balancer on top of that to define the routing. And then you define the auto scaling group which brings in and launches the template based on the scaling policy, based on the number of you know, instances and so on. And uh, that is how you do this basically, right? So that's about the auto scaling part. Uh, any questions anyone has here? Yeah, so, um, the next mission, I'm still deciding on it. So either uh, it would be writing scripts, some scripts, or possibly Terraform is what I'm thinking of uh, about right now. So um, we have so far designed the network, deployed the application, did some networking Linux stuff. Today, we looked at how to create application with cloud, make it scalable, available, uh, define the load balancing, routing, and whatnot. And then we'll continue with that journey for at least one more week, possibly two more weeks also. And uh, uh, I'll add a couple of missions here as we go along. It will kind of, again, dynamically evolve based on uh, how this application use case is shaping up. Uh, I may pick one of the uh, missions here accordingly. And that's what uh, we would do here. Uh, where is the where are the recordings available? The recordings are available already um, on YouTube. They have been posted. If you are part of the School of DevOps um, platform and a member, you already have this available as part of CloudOps cohort. So if you go to the portal, the LMS portal, and search for CloudOps cohort, uh, you are going to see uh, all the recordings along with uh, some lab guides and uh, irrelevant uh, documents that you would require in order to complete it yourself as well is all part of this, right? So it's already there. I'll upload the one for mission five or the week five here. And that should also be there by say tomorrow or so. And you can uh, continue and follow up and continue on that one uh, and complete the missions so far that we have created uh, and take the kind of a maximum benefit out of uh, the ongoing cohort session. Any questions, anyone? Hello, yeah, Garo, one question. Yes. Yeah, so this, uh, just now we've seen this auto scaling and the load balancer. So I mm -hmm. think this for the VM, if any cloud native is different or the same pattern will follow? You're talking about Kubernetes? Yes, 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 correct. Kubernetes has its own scaling. So when we are talking about Kubernetes scaling, that is at the container level. That's even better because Kubernetes scaling is much faster. Uh, how do you use it? Let's say you have deployed your Kubernetes cluster on cloud. Let's imagine that, right? Because ultimately you run it on some VMs, right? Those VMs, like let's say you've used DKS. 
EKS is a managed service by Kubernetes, uh, by AWS for Kubernetes, EC2 Kubernetes engine. So what you essentially do is you launch a bunch of VMs. Let's say you've launched 10 VMs, like EC2 instances. And then on top of that, you would set up your EKS cluster. The EKS cluster will look like this one logical entity. You divide that into namespaces and whatnot, and you start running containers here. So when you talk about con containers or pods and scaling them, in Kubernetes, we typically use HPA, which is similar to auto-scaling groups that we've looked at. Kubernetes also has the concept of VPA, where you can scale vertically in combination with HPA and VPA. You can have a combination of that, and you can provide more resources to this uh, also, and that way you can scale vertically too. So you can do vertical scaling, you can do horizontal scaling with Kubernetes. And the third dimension of that is ultimately when you want to launch like, oh, you want to launch thousand pods. Now you need few more VMs for that as well. So there also you will need the scaling. So this is in Kubernetes called as, uh, typically you use something called as a cluster auto scaler to scale the underlying instances or there is a very cool tool, very useful tool and very popular today called as Carpenter, which does a more efficient scaling, very useful in the world of Kubernetes and cloud. So if you're running it on cloud, you also need to scale underlying nodes and you scale the pods. For pod scaling, you have HPA and VPA. For node scaling, we have cluster auto scaler Carpenter, or you can use the service by Kubernetes called as Fargate which takes care of the underlying scaling and all of that. But mostly people use these kind of solutions along with uh, the HPA VPA in Kubernetes. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, by the way, this, whatever I'm explaining here, this is a new course that I'm working on right now. Uh, I have the labs and everything ready. I am done with Argo course. The next course that I'm gonna create would be EKS where we'll be talking about a lot of other things, but definitely all of the scaling things that we just talked about, like this, this, cluster mm -hmm. order scaler, carpenter. Uh, there is another advanced version of this scaling, even based scaling called as KEDA. So those technologies also will bring in there. Uh, Gaurav, one question is for the... <laughs> yes. uh, When scale down happens, like, is there any best practice uh, what VM to be taken down first, and uh, uh, is there any particular uh, any industry best practices or like uh, or, uh, AWS randomly picks one VM and just uh, scale it, uh, take it away? <laughs> no. So uh, there is no such. Uh, some of the prerequisites are your application has to be uh, horizontally scale ready, as in stateless. If you have a stateless application, then it doesn't matter exactly which instance goes down. When the instance goes down, you get some, you know, you have, you can kind of gracefully terminate. So it tries to drain the connections and then it start tries to scale down. That's something you have. And if you have seen the auto scaling group configuration, there are new configurations available where you can decide uh, whether you want to launch the instance, new instance first, to replace it and things like that when you're trying to change or update configurations and stuff. So there are now some configurations available which can help you drive uh, some policies when the scaling events happen, right? Uh, yeah. Let's see if we can find out. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, that's a, uh, something like that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So some behavior that you can change here where you can launch before terminating an instance or terminate and launch and stuff like that, right? So you can define some sort of a behavior here. And when scaling down happens, it's mostly about draining the connections, making sure that existing transactions are not affected and all that. So that should could be some grace period that you will have. And you can make sure that all everything that you need to shut down, you do that. Uh, so that it happens gracefully. And in case of a combination of this with uh, uh, Kubernetes and stuff, then uh, it's kind of easier. So you uh, you have tools like 
cluster autoscaler and carpenter, which will take care of uh, scaling down uh, also for you when it comes to node scaling down, scaling out, and so on. Yeah, obviously, when it is scaling down, like it has to make sure, like, uh, you know, it's evenly, like, it is not going to scale down one from one particular available region, make sure, like, instances are Correct. available for both. Yeah, those kind of things. So, yeah. Okay. So you can use a combination of policies plus how what happens when you shut down an instance so that behavior um and some kind of a grace period draining and all that to uh, make sure that you're doing it as gracefully as possible yeah. okay thanks okay uh any other questions folks all right uh, we'll be closing our sessions in that case. So thank you very much for attending today's session. For CloudOps cohort, we still have one or two missions left to go. And uh, then we will wrap up uh, this kind of a program. And uh, I'm still, again, thinking of what to add as part of this project. So, uh, you know, based on that, we'll pick up one mission there. And um, we'll come back next Monday and continue with our journey here. Right. So thank you very much for attending these sessions and I'll see you on uh, next Monday. And we have a Thursday call as usual for our members. So feel free to join that as well. I'll see you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. -bye. Bye,